We start with today is how do we keep our children safe at school? Everyone's having this talk at the dinner table across the country, and we are having it right here as tomorrow marks one month since the tragedy at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 17 students and faculty lost their lives that day. And students at Stone, Stoneman Douglas and throughout the country are prepared to walk out of their schools to honor the lives lost and press for change on this one month mark. One of those voices pushing for change is Lori Alhadef. Her 14 year old daughter Alyssa was one of the victims. And Lori says she will now use every ounce of energy she has left to make sure, make sure no other parent has to face this pain. It's become one of the most memorable moments stemming from the unimaginable grief and anger over the Parkland, Florida school shooting. The gunman, a crazy person, just walks right into the school, knocks down the window of my child's door and starts shooting, shooting her. The emotional plea of a mother on CNN. I just spent the last two hours putting the burial arrangements for my daughter's funeral, who's 14. President Trump, please do something. Lori Alhadef's oldest child, Alyssa, loved soccer, had many friends, and big goals. Friends and family describe her as passionate, fun, and kind. Alyssa was one of the 17 killed that afternoon. Our daughter was our life. Part of us died that day. Tomorrow marks one month. One month since the promise of a future was brutally stolen from 14 students and three faculty members trying to protect and save others. Loria Hadef has spent that time speaking out. She is determined to do what she can to make sure no other families endure what hers has. No kid should have to say to their mother, Mommy, am I going to die today if I go to school? And she's taking it to the next level with her new organization called Make School Safe, which is aimed at doing exactly that. We're fighting for all the kids of America, not just Parkland. We're fighting for everyone. Hmm. Lori Ahadef joins me now. My heart goes out to you on your loss, and my gratitude goes to you as well as the mother of three children myself. And I know you have two other children as well who you're, you're determined to protect my kids and your kids and all of our viewers' children. When we saw you that day, Lori, when we saw you on CNN saying, do something, you know, directly addressing President Trump, do something, do you have faith at this moment that something will be done, something meaningful? I do. I think we have come together as one nation and one voice and the whole entire world and the United States of America, we are all fighting to make our so schools safe again. Mm -hmm. how, how are you doing one month after this loss? I'm in survival mode. I'm fighting. I'm fighting for my two other children, and I'm also fighting for the rest of the kids in America and around the world. That's got to be somewhat cathartic, right, to work on an action plan as opposed to just being mired in your grief, which I'm sure is happening as well. Can we go back to the day that we lost Alyssa and, and the first notice you had that something was wrong at the school? I was at home and I received a text message saying, shots fired at Stoneman Douglas, kids jumping the fence and running. I immediately had an overwhelming sense of loss that came over me. I knew at that moment that Alyssa was hurt and something happened. I got in my car and I drove as fast as I could to get to Alyssa at the school. I parked my car on the sidewalk and I got out and I ran and I ran to go get Alyssa. I was the only one holding myself and I was screaming. I knew I had a sense of knowing that something was wrong with Alyssa. At one point there was yellow tape across from tree to tree and I broke through the tape and I started running trying to get but a police officer 200 pounds of all muscle he stopped me and I said I have to get to Alyssa she's hurt and he pushed me back they wound up putting you and other parents in sort of a holding area while they figured out where the shooter was what the situation was and so on 
How long was it until you received word about what had happened to her? We waited nine hours. Nine hours to find out that we believe Alyssa is dead. We believe. In that time, were you, were you texting with her? Did she have a cell phone? Were you, were you trying to reach her? So I did reach out to Alyssa. I told Alyssa, hide, Alyssa. Do whatever you can. Hide. The police are coming. Not knowing and not receiving any response. Correct. And I also, Alyssa has an app on her phone where I can track her. And the whole entire time, her phone went to Stoneman Douglas High School. So you knew she hadn't left the premises? Correct. She went everywhere with her cell phone. It was an attachment to her body. When you saw, Lori, I mean, were you seeing uh, police or other authorities come in and notify other parents while you were sitting there and waiting? I mean, what? No. Describe the scene that you were in the middle of it at that, at that hour. We were just waiting there. It was very cold in the room. I was wearing a tank top. I was freezing. But the Red Cross came. They gave us blankets. And there was tons of food. Nobody was notified until about 2.30 in the morning. Um, we just waited, and we waited. At one point, I went to the bathroom, and I screamed my head off. I screamed because I knew Alyssa was gone. And now you have this bond with the other parents that you never wished to have. When we saw you on TV that day, you seemed grief-stricken and angry and were channeling as the mother of one of the victims feelings that we were all feeling to, of course, a lesser extent, but also powerfully. Have you evolved at all in that grief and that anger over the past month? Has it grown? Is it still there? How are you feeling? I feel like a Band-Aid was ripped off my heart. And every day, there is pain. And there is pain which no mother, I would never wish on any mother in the world. Have you gone to visit her at the cemetery? Have you, is that comforting to you at all? I did go to, my husband and I did go to the cemetery to visit Alyssa once. And when we were there, we, we kneeled down and we were talking to Alyssa and a big, bright yellow butterfly flew by us. And I felt it was like a sign, knowing that Alyssa was at peace. Right. And now you are working so hard and diligently in the midst of this grief to try to protect all children. And she's joined by a group of students who are looking for accountability and looking for change, change that will allow them to live and learn in their schools safely. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.